Hello, welcome to the Livestreams Karawara podcast. We're delighted to have you join us. We invite you to sit back, relax, and listen to our latest episode. Thanks for joining. We're going to be looking at um, 2 Peter 3. So if you have your Bibles there, please uh, open them up or or scroll there, and and we'll have it on the screens as well. Uh, But just talking about a perspective shift, having, uh, we, we all naturally have our own perspectives, our own biases. Um, things that I would like to happen, things that you would like to happen. Um, but as I read, read through uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, I just felt just this call to, to ask God to show us how to love people like he loves people. It's a shift from uh, putting ourselves at the center to putting others at the center and to putting the, the gospel message at the center. So let's read from 2 Peter chapter 3. Um, as we go through tonight, um, as we've been doing, just invite you to, to think of one action, you know, one thing that you can do this week um, to respond, one thing that you can do to uh, cement this uh, into, your, into your heart or to, uh, to help someone else, and, and, and also who's one person you're going to talk to about it, whether that's for accountability uh, or whether that's um, someone you can share this with to really help them out so as, as we go through. But 2 Peter chapter 3. Dear friends... This is now my second letter to you. I've written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in these last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, Everything goes on just as it has from the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forgot that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the word of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and the earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Gets a bit heavy there. And this is where I want to land. Verse 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. It's a bit of a perspective shift. God's perspective... It's not one of, of rushing things. It's one of patience. His will is that none, none should perish, but everyone should come into repentance. Everyone should come to know him. In the last days, which we're living in, we're living in the last days before Jesus comes again, um, people will come and scoff, and they'll follow their own will, uh, and they'll forget God. Peter's reminding us, as his believers, not to forget what he's done in the past, not to forget his plans and his purposes, but to keep our attention on him, to keep focused on him, to keep our our perspective as his perspective. I wonder if you've ever heard anyone say, this this world is is broken, it's horrible, there's so much suffering, so much injustice, you know, where is your God? Or why hasn't Jesus come back yet? Um, Maybe someone's personally saying, you know, I, I just I wish Jesus would come back. And I, don't, I don't know if I can keep on going anymore because I just need Jesus to come back. Uh, perhaps just that life isn't fair. Why is the person who's lying, who's cheating, who's defrauding people, why are they getting ahead? Why are they seemingly being blessed? This thinking here reveals our hearts. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not wrong to have a lot of those thoughts, but it's showing that, that we're looking at it from our perspective. Our perspective is this world is broken and, and we want, want to wrap it up really quick. But God, God's not wanting to wrap it up really quick because his heart is for people. His heart is that people would come to know him and people would repent and be saved. So if we think of um, a game of sports, so whether you like soccer or whether you like basketball or cricket, think of your sport and there's two teams. And... Um, you're in the, the final, um, let's pick soccer, you know, you're, you're in the final five minutes of the game, uh, one team's got two goals, the other team's got one, and it's been a very tight game the whole way through. Yeah, the team that's ahead, the team that's got two goals, they're currently winning, 
they're probably thinking, wow, I can't wait for this clock to, to wind down. I can't wait for that referee's whistle to go. Be and, and, and time is going so slowly for them because they just want it to be over. They just want to win. Uh, how about the other team? The team who's losing. They're in the same, the same game, but their perspective is probably, wow, this game is going so fast. There's not enough time left. I, they're, they're wanting the referee to delay as long as possible, you know, hoping for some injury time, some extra time to, to be able to get that goal back and, and get the draw and um, uh, you know, take, take it into, into the overtime. So two people playing the same game. Maybe you're a spectator and you're watching your team play. Um, same game, but there's two very different perspectives going on. And so the invitation I'd like to give tonight is to shift our perspective from, from ours, what we'd naturally do in our in our human nature, to, to God's perspective. Um, I'd like you to just take a moment to, to speak to the person either side of you um, and, and share. You can share as, as deeply as you like or, as, um, or, or keep it quite, um, quite surface level. That's okay. Um, but if, if, if you were to decide when Jesus could come back, right? if you could tell, tell Jesus, yep, Jesus, come on this day, when would it be? Is it, is it going to be soon or is it going to be in the future? Just have, have that conversation. There's no, no right or wrong answers here, but uh, just have that conversation with the person next to you. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, can I just get a, a really quick show of hands? Who, who would like Jesus to come back sooner rather than later? Who, who, who would like sooner? Yeah? How, how about, you know, wanting Jesus to delay? You, you, you'd probably prefer that, that you've, you've lived your life and, and yeah, great. And Darren's got both hands up. So. <laughs> but but that's, that's the perspective Paul had. Um, so if, if we look to Philippians 1, uh, Paul says, famous line, for to me, this is Paul speaking, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Right? What, what he's saying is eternity is going to be amazing, but God's given me a purpose here on earth. And that's, that's the perspective uh, that, that, that Christians should hold. Eternity is going to be amazing, and, and Jesus will come back and he will restore creation, but he's given us uh, a, a commission. He's given us a purpose, each of us. Um, God's will is that all would be saved. In order to, that more people get saved, we have to have, have this world go on for a little bit longer. All throughout the Old Testament, um, we can see that this, the characteristics of God's patience is, is shown. It's, it's in the Psalms, it's in Joel, it's even in Ezekiel. But uh, th this is the one that I love. The, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. He is slow to anger and abounding in love. You know, he, there's so many times where he withholds his wrath from the people of Israel, or we, he, he, he withholds his judgment giving them time to repent, giving them time to come back to him. Uh, and his timing is perfect. You know, and you know, for most of us, that, that question I asked before, that's probably not at the top of your list, you know, when is Jesus coming back in? But you've got other questions. You might be asking questions like, how long will this season of my life go on? You know, how, how long will this struggle go on for? Um, or, or even, God, what are you saying to me? I, I don't feel I can hear your voice. Can, can you give me some clarity? You know, why haven't you made things clear? And so we're not asking the, the end times questions, but we're asking questions of God. And, and can you see how in a similar way we're, we're trying to project our perspective onto what God's doing? God's timing is perfect, and, and his patience is, is a principle that we have to hold. So when we pray, um, I, I love this, I think, it's, it's, I think it's Nicky Gumbel, probably others as well, but he's the one I remember. He says, God answers with either yes, no, or, or wait. So sometimes we get the yes answer, sometimes we get the no answer, but sometimes it's just the, just wait. God's timing is perfect, his will is perfect. And, and we know Romans 8.28, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, those who have been called according to his purpose. So if you find yourself in a, in a season of life where um, people are mocking, people are scoffing, people are saying, why are you believing in Jesus? Or, or where is your God right now? You're going through something really tough. Be encouraged. God is patient. In the end, we have eternity. We have hope. We have the beauty of heaven and eternity with God. 
But right now, all we can do is trust him. We, ha- we have a, um, our, our season is uh, humility, repentance, and prayer. And for me, this takes incredible humility. It's, it's, not, it's not my will, God. Not my will be done, but your will be done. Uh, verse 8, uh, if I flick back a little bit. Um, do not forget, right at the top there, that's an imperative, that's a command. That, that's strong language for, you know, we, we, we might easily forget that God is outside of time. God thinks differently. His ways are higher, his ways are better. But Peter's saying to the, to the church, do not forget. Remember who your God is. Remember he is a patient, loving, compassionate God who's slow to anger. So we, we get... Um, just flick through. We get led into a, a place of needing to trust him because we don't know how long the season's going to last for, whether before Jesus comes back or the, or the season of trial that we're going through now or the season of uncertainty that we're going to. So my response needs to be trust. It needs to be total reliance on God. That's, that's the only appropriate response. But that's hard. That requires humility. It requires me to, to calm my own ideas, my own motivations, and say, God, what do you want? What are you asking me to do? That's the fir- first thing I, that I would sort of reflected on. The other um, really wonderful aspect is that God is a patient God. He's inviting people to repent. He's inviting people who don't know him to come into a saving relationship. But he's also inviting me when I sin. He's not hovering over with a stick ready to judge me as soon as I, I sin again. But he's inviting me to repentance. He's a gracious God who is slow to anger. How good would it be if, if our hearts were the same as God's hearts? If we were slow to anger, if we were compassionate, if we, um, if we left things to God, if our hearts were aligned to his, I think it would be, be really wonderful. And that's, that was the song um, that, we, that we sung just before. God, break my heart for the things that break yours. Lord, everything for your kingdom's cause. And finally, um, you know, it just shows God's heart for people. Many people know John, John 3.16, very famous Bible verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Verse 17, Jesus did not come into the world to condemn it, but to save it. God's heart is for people. He's not slow in keeping his promises. He's not slow in wrapping up this world and, and restoring creation. But he's got a plan and he's got a purpose, and, and we're part of it. And so should our, our response as his children not be to to have the same heart as him and to pray for those around us, to, to pray for those people who, um, who aren't yet in his kingdom, to pray for the, the people who are tough to love, that they would come into a saving relationship with Jesus. Um, we led through, um, John led us through the, the prayer time, just praying for, um, for our governments. This is another bit of the New Testament where, um, where Paul's talking with Timothy. Um, we sort of, we'll start at, down the bottom and link our way back up. But um, God wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. So it's repeated again. So we've got some Old Testament, we've got Peter, we've got Paul. It's pretty consistent. God wants all people to be saved. But he urges us then that petitions, prayer, intersection, and, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Also for those kings and people in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in godliness and in holiness. Our God wants all people to be saved. Our response is to pray. Trust him when we don't see what he's doing, when we don't know how long is left in our game, but we know what the outcome is. Right? We, that, that, that's the, the wonderful thing is, is we know how it ends. We know he, Jesus comes back, creation is restored, we get to spend eternity with our God. So trust him. Uh, when we do mess up, there's an invitation to repent. For those friends and family who don't know Jesus, we can extend that invitation to repentance. He's, not, he's, he's withholding his anger intentionally so that they can come into a relationship with him. It's an amazing opportunity. And finally, we can pray that our, 
our hearts are um, aligned with God's, that we're, we're fulfilling the purpose while we're here on earth uh, that he would like us to fulfill. So I'd love to just give you a little bit of space, um, just to sit for a minute and ask the Holy Spirit, is there something for you this week? Uh, is there someone to talk to? Uh, is there some attitude in your heart? Is there anything else the Spirit wants to bring up? Maybe it's, it's about repentance. Maybe it's about this idea of humility and the, nar- the narrative that you're running in your head. Because um, this is me normally, that you know, I need to get my way. I need to have control. But just to step back and, and, and humbly trust and rely on God. So I'll give you a moment. I'll just ask, Holy Spirit, please come and speak to us now. Um, just reveal, bring to the surface anything that you have for us each individually. Jesus, we thank you that you are coming back. We thank you that you know, we know the end of the story, and it's a good ending. It's an ending with you sitting on the throne. Lord, help us um, to, to live in that knowledge, to live in that assur- with that assurity. Um, but Lord, not to, not to take it for granted, but to, to know that even in that assurity that we have, uh, you're calling us to live lives uh, for you today. Help us to live holy lives, godly lives, lives where we trust in you, lives where we, we humbly surrender a whole life to you. Um, because we know that eternity is secure and we're fully relying on you. So God, um, I just, just ask that you would um, speak to us, encourage us, correct us where you need to correct us. Uh, and ultimately, Lord, that everything we do will be for your glory. So I pray a blessing over this congregation this coming week, Lord. Uh, may, we, may we live um, out, out of the truth that you've established in our hearts, out of this truth um, that you are slow to anger, you're a gracious and compassionate and patient God. I thank you for these things, for the, your character and what you do for us. I pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. Tune in next week for another Life Streams Karawara message. Have a blessed week.